And like yeah. a, a lot of these girls that are like diving head first into that realm and into that lifestyle, like yeah. do you have any advice for them? Like, is there anything you would say to a younger, younger Amara? Mm -hmm. So I feel differently about OnlyFans and content created by um, girls individually. Yeah. A lot of the issues with the sex industry is professional porn because it's led by agents who are 40, 50-year-old men, and they're mm. very manipulative of young 18, 19-year-old girls. So I personally have an issue with professional, not independent content creation, like yeah. what you see on OnlyFans, Patreon, or any of those platforms. I, however, do think when it comes to age that people should not be able to participate in pro professional until maybe over 21, maybe yeah. even later, because I don't think you're emotionally mature enough or have the thought process to think things through yeah. fully at that age yeah that's very true yeah because i i know when i was 18 like i thought i was invincible like i was running around the world world being like a, a dickhead like getting yeah. drunk all the time and then, like, you should have thought of that earlier well i agree the corn industry is an evil bad place but she was in it long enough to make millions she became a multi-millionaire doing it so i don't know if i'm really buying it now if she did one scene and then was doing this, I would probably say, do you know what? She might have made a mistake, but she did years and years and years worth of content. Then she retires in the 20s as a multimillionaire. Then she regrets it. And I just see this all the time. But I mean, we've, we've watched many adult actresses say the same thing. They regret it and say they were manipulated after they claim the benefits. But regardless of that, I'm all for it, her trying to put people off it and telling them not to do it because it seems to be a pandemic right now, girls getting into that stuff, especially on OF. So the more girls she can put off, the better. Would you rather have a, a loyal broken or a cheater with money? A cheater with money. Really? Yeah. Because I don't really give because I'm going to do what I want to do. Look at this fucking generation. No. <laughs> what the fuck? Nah. Nah, I can't. What the hell? I can't deal with that, bro. I'm talking about cheating with money so you don't care about love and happiness and being secure. So you're secure. With money? That's fucking crazy. Nah, nah. That's crazy. Shit, you know? To each his own, though. You know what I'm saying? She belongs to the streets. Would you rather a millionaire that cheats or a broke guy that's loyal? That's a tough one. They say that money doesn't buy happiness, but I'm going to go with the millionaire that cheats, okay? Because I could cheat back on him, you know, but still get the dough. That's all I'm saying. Why the millionaire that cheats? Money can buy you happiness, I think. Like, I'd rather be driving a Porsche, you know, going to his yacht than, you know, just chilling in, on the side of the street. You know what I'm saying? A lot of women in the West, like, you know, in the States, the UK, a lot of these places, girls will always say they want a guy with money over the loyal man. But fast forward 20 years, I'm pretty sure they'll give a different answer when they've got no kids, no grandkids or nothing. When they come home in their 40s, 50s, whatever, and their man is just sat there with a 20-year-old because that, that's what you signed up for. And I'm pretty sure that's not happiness for you. What percentage of men earn less than £24,000 a year? No, I'm good. I feel ill. I actually feel ill. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like a, is there like a medic? Like, There's a bucket. Like, <laughs> so from 18 <laughs> onwards. Well, yeah. a lot of 18 year olds aren't going to earn that lot because they're kids still, technically. It's probably levels, quite but... high. I feel like 25k is like the starting salary after uni, like 25 to 30k. Isn't it isn't like it? 18? That's for like retail and like uh, minimum wage jobs. What? I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay. Oh I'm gonna say like 65. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick on 50. It's not much more than the minimum wage. So yeah. Obviously, they should be earning that. <laughs> but this is how many men earn that a year, isn't it? Earn less. Earn less than. Less, less than 24. Because 24. Okay. 24K so you think a lot of men earn less than 24. No. So you should probably more. go down. So oh, more. Oh, most people are on more than 24. Yeah, oh, so okay. you should probably yeah, go yeah. down here then. Because 24K is still significantly higher than minimum wage. Is I it? Believe. Yeah, what? I think so. How do people live these days? You, you can't. Cost That's of really prices. sad. I know. That was raised 30%. Oh. 30, oh. You can tell the thought of being with a guy who makes that money just makes those girls sick. I can see it written all over their face. Those girls are... They're completely right. The cost of living and everything is crazy. But they would never date a man who makes that money. They never would. I don't know if he needs to 
hear this, but men don't actually feel emotions differently than women. They feel them the exact same. They have the same emotional needs. But for some reason, we have this ideology in society that like men just don't feel things the way we do, that they don't express it, that men are just angry and they don't feel sad. But we don't stop to ask ourselves, how many times have we discouraged a man into sharing his emotions? How many times has our boyfriends expressed themselves and then by the end of the conversation, they're consoling us for how their feelings may how many times have we told an injured little boy to man up or not be a little girl? The only emotions that we encourage men to have is happiness, angriness, and happiness. And anything else, you're just non-human? I don't know. Men aren't walking tin men's. They're people. Thank you. Yep. And I went straight to the comments of this video and there's no girls there. None. They don't want to talk about it. And a lot of us guys, I'm talking from experience for me as well, and I'm pretty sure it's the same with you guys. We've all tried to share our feelings once to a girl, just once. And we quickly found out that how we feel is irrelevant. It, it, we've all been there. We've all been there. And it's just like that saying, what's the difference between a hero and a coward? Nothing. It's what the hero does that makes him a hero. And it's what the coward doesn't do that makes him a coward. Regardless of how we feel, it's what we do. You know, a guy's life could be falling apart and he'll still go out every day and bust his ass at his job with a smile on his face because he knows that the majority, if not most of the world, just doesn't care how a man feels. I have a question for everyone in the bathroom. Yes, ma'am. Should I dump him? Yes. You finished? I'm an aggressive, dominant female, right? So how do I get a guy to break those walls down? <laughs> Put the shoe on the other foot real quick. I just want to, I guess, note what this be sounding like to me. I can't wait for a woman to come along and bring me into my masculine era. I, I, I mean, the right woman to really motivate me to really protect and provide for her because most of these women done had me in my soft air for so long that I don't even know if women are really worthy of bringing out my masculinity. So I really, I really got to trust the right one in order to be the man that I'm supposed to be. Who, who, who dating me? I say some shit like that. Well, you know what's crazy? That who who f with me if, if, if I'm saying that me being a man is contingent on you being the woman that you supposed to be? Like, be realistic. You feel me? And again, this this is not, not to knock my, my beloved. I don't know her and I, I don't know contextually what she means by having walls up. You feel me? And that's why I said I'm trying to be gracious. But I find too often, especially because it's popular rhetoric, rhetoric that a lot of women will rather choose to, 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 to place their healing, to place their progress on the, on the backs of a doing what he's supposed to be doing like like ladies bro because again i find it more with women take men out of the center of your life and see what that do for you yep facts right there and if a girl says that you know especially on a first date it's a long road ahead it's a long road ahead it, 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 you're rolling the dice with that one one of the biggest lies i used to tell myself but i thought was the truth when i was single before i got married was men are intimidated by me I thought because I had a house, a car, been driving BMW since I was 24 years old, I thought that because I made a lot of money that men just couldn't handle it, they were intimidated, and they were turned off because I was doing better than them. That is one of the biggest lies or the things that we think when really the problem is us. <laughs> Got him. I'll tell you two things I did to have the most amazing time while I was dating because it seems like you guys are out there suffering and I just cannot relate because I had a great time while I was single. Number one, I made sure that I had experiences. I was not going on dates with a man who was not offering me experiences. You need to provide your value add or else I'm not coming. That's why so many of you feel let down because you literally get nothing out of it. You're going to the fucking park and then when it doesn't work out, of course you wasted your time because all you did was go to the park. Like you had to offer me something in order for it to make sense for me to give you my time because my time is valuable. Number two, I treated my entire dating experience as if I was the bachelorette and I was going through contestant, which means the more you did for me, the more time you got. Like, I ranked them and it was very obvious that they were getting ranked. Jesus can't save these hoes. Why are you trying? 
Bloody hell, that's a prestige 100 gold digger if I've ever seen one. So pretty much what she's saying is, she's for sale and the highest bidder wins. This is the worst advice I've ever heard. You know, she's trying to give younger girls advice on how to be a successful gold digger. Listen, I know she's on the beach. Life is great in that moment. But 10, 20 years from then, like I say, she's not going to be saying the same thing. I bet on it.